Good afternoon, everyone. This is another update on Tropical Storm Alberto for Wednesday, June the 19th, 2024. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone, and making any decisions regarding Tropical Storm Alberto, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local officials for the latest information for where you are. So, as we did mention in yesterday's video, how potential Tropical Cyclone 1 would become our first named storm, Alberto, on our list of names for the Atlantic hurricane season. The National Hurricane Center does indicate that this has acquired enough organization for this to become Tropical Storm Alberto as of this morning and this early afternoon. As we can see from satellite, we have really, really strong Tropical Storm Force winds occurring well to the north of the center. No, we're not seeing a whole lot of intense rain bands over the waters of the Gulf, but we're seeing a really intense rain band feature moving over Florida. This has already brought a couple of inches of rain to these areas. We have very intense convective banding-like futures to the west and to the south of the center, where a recent buoy observation did indicate we have winds nearing 45 miles an hour. Now, when we take a look at this more closer up, we can see where that center is likely located. And it is right here where we have very little in the way of cloud movement. We have very strong wind occurring on the northeastern side of the system, and then the winds come all the way down from the north on the western side and then wrap up all the way around it, making this a very asymmetrical system where we do have uh, a curly Q feature to this, which is a classified bona fide system that gives this a tropical storm. And that's why the National Hurricane Center does give this one because of all this deep convection, lots of thunderstorms, and recon mission does confirm that there are tropical storm force winds now even occurring on the southwestern side of the circulation. And therefore, Alberto now possesses a very well-defined circulation. Now, looking at the water vapor imagery, what does the environment look like throughout Alberto's life before landfall? Well, right now, looks very favorable and quite conducive for further intensification. We can see this bubble of high pressure air, these feathery white cirrus expanding in all quadrants from the circulation, probably a little bit more uh, moted here on the eastern flank of the system, but it's doing a good job at generating more outflow in all quadrants near its center. And this is a pretty healthy, optimal position for where Alberto can intensify a little further. Now, the only thing that's limiting this is how large its wind field is. In general, when you think about the circulation law of physics, when a system is very large with a tropical storm force wind field like this, it's not able to contract and focus its energy more closer in to the center. And therefore, Alberto is struggling to further intensify despite this wind field being so strong on the northern side. Otherwise, though, the system would be in a very optimal conducive environment to allow perhaps explosive intensification with Gulf waters that are in the mid 80s. Another look at this is from a recon mission that did a survey through Alberto. And we can see definitely some orange wind barbs here. This is 50 knot winds. This is very strong at the flight level standpoint. That's winds over 60 to even 70 miles an hour, perhaps, in some of these intense more rain bands. However, the winds are pretty loose on this side, but we just did get an observation outside of this that did get tropical storm force winds. So this is a fairly well-defined circulation at this time. And that's why Alberto is getting named. So now I want to make it clear that just because we do have a tropical storm here with 40 mile an hour winds, that does not mean that the impacts are not that bad at all. Because of how large Tropical Storm Alberto's wind field actually is, this makes it a particularly dangerous situation with significant flooding, coastal impacts, and wind impacts as well. Users are reminded not to focus on the exact forecast track of this system. Alberto is a very large with rainfall and coastal flooding and wind impacts likely to occur well far from the center along the coast of Texas and northeastern Mexico. Heavy rainfall associated with Tropical Storm Alberto will impact large regions of Central America, north across northeastern Mexico, and into South Texas. This rainfall will likely produce 
considerable flash and urban flooding along with new and renewed river flooding. Life-threatening flooding and mudslides are likely in and near areas of higher terrain across the Mexican states of Coahuila, whatever those are. Can't even read Spanish, folks. Bear with me. I'm sorry about that, but I'll give you one. Monterey and Sinidad, Victoria are also going to see these big impacts. Moderate coastal flooding is likely along much of the Texas coast through Thursday. Tropical storm conditions are expected today along portions of the Texas coast south of the San Luis Pass and along portions of the coast of northeastern Mexico with a tropical storm warning in that area. I do want to make it clear there are tropical storm force winds now over northeastern Mexico and southernmost Texas over the McAllen area. So please take the precautions right now to protect your house and your life and property since coastal impacts such as storm surge, flooding, as well as freshwater flooding, very intense winds, and severe thunderstorms are also likely. Looking at additional rainfall today across southern Texas is pretty phenomenal. South of San Antonio over the Rio Grande area, you might see as much as four to six additional inches of rainfall Two inches of rain has already fallen in that area within the last 24 hours, and more additional rainfall is expected. We're already seeing um, forecasts coming out for some of these higher elevations where we do get that orographic lift. Some areas here could get two feet of rainfall in the pink colors that you see on your screen, with many areas off that that could get six to eight inches of additional rainfall. This is going to lead to catastrophic flooding, including landslides, river, and debris flows um, that can cause a lot of problems. So again, folks, because this is a tropical storm, and just because it's uh, a low-grade one with 40 mile an hour winds does not mean the impacts are not that significant at all. This is a very wet system, and that will bring a lot of rainfall. Now, taking a look at how much rain or what are the flood impacts for your area. Well, across southern Texas, there is a moderate risk for flash flooding, urban flooding, street flooding, river flooding, small stream flooding as well with the risk for debris flows as well as land and uh, land and rock slides in some of the steeper terrain. This includes even for portions of New Mexico and northern Texas. The storm surge is also looking pretty significant given that it's only a 40 mile an hour tropical storm. Remember, this is over a pretty large area, so this is going to generate a lot of waves, a lot of storm surge, and a lot of surf. So uh, mouth of the Rio Grande area could see as much as one to three feet of storm surge. Some of the four bays here, such as, say, um, if you're in, say, Corpus Christi, if you're in Houston, you might see as much as two to four feet of storm surge in some of these areas. Sabine Pass, Vermilion Bay might see one to three feet of storm surge. And remember, there's more than just wind with a, st uh, with a tropical storm. We're going to see a lot of heavy rainfall. And of course, there's going to be storm surge and some flooding concerns along the coast. So consider that as an impact too. Everything here is an impact. Now, just to show you how large the wind field with Tropical Storm Alberto is, anything in orange for reference is Tropical Storm Force winds, and that expands all the way up to the north of southern Texas. So pretty much um, much of northeastern Mexico right now is being impacted by tropical storm conditions. And therefore, we're looking at a tropical storm warning further south because that wind field will continue to expand. And we have tropical storm warnings up here across Houston, Texas, into the southwest because of tropical light conditions that are possible this afternoon into Thursday morning. So now, when we take a look at our latest GFS model deep moisture plot, so areas in teal do indicate and denote a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. Areas in brown here in the brown shading denote drier air in the deep layers of the atmosphere, very hostile and unfavorable for tropical cyclones. So when we put this into motion uh, for this afternoon, we can see here is Tropical Storm Alberto, a nice deep moisture fetch here coming from the deep tropics here of central Mexico and Central America, wrapping all the way around into the system, bringing a lot of rainfall, that's why there's a lot of flood problems with this, along to go with strong winds, because this is a very wet system. 
Now, we're not going to spend any time at all on this little guy here headed towards Georgia, but I'll just simply put this into brief context. If you are in northern Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, you could see some moderate impacts from this little disturbance over the southwestern Atlantic, maybe some wind, some heavy rainfall, and that sort of thing, but nothing like Alberto. So going forward here, we can see that another system now, once Alberto moves onshore, I'm afraid that's not the only system that we'll have to watch for. We may have to watch for another system down here in the Northwestern Caribbean that might want to spin up again. And this could be another system that we might have to watch that could get named eventually because on the GFS model, we uh, put this into motion. It does try to bonify a little bit more similar to Alberto with its wind field and with its intensity. But this time, more of the heavy rainfall could be aimed again at northeastern Mexico. Now, the one thing that these systems do have in common is the lack of wind shear, especially if we take a look at our wind shear forecast. Darker red colors on, your, on the map here indicate very strong shear. Areas in green and light teal color, blue colors, indicate very little wind shear. And so Alberto is deemed over here underneath this anticyclonic bubble of upper level divergent flow aloft. And what this does, and this is going to help Alberto to become better defined right before landfall. And then if we go further in time... While that will allow um, Alberto to weaken once it gets on shore, we have another system over here that could pop on the other side. And with upper level uh, flow, that becomes also somewhat favorable here with outflow spreading in all quadrants. This is not a good sign at all for the southern Gulf of Mexico. They have had too much rain recently, and they're probably going to get more rain before this is all said and done. As always, Today, I was not able to make a live stream just because the impacts are not quite severe enough. That could change in a hurry, though. This evening, I may be providing a live stream right around maybe 5, 6, or 7 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time. So make sure you stay notified on my YouTube channel by subscribing. So you must subscribe to the channel if you want to get notifications and updates on the channel. Hit the like button and share this video with your family and friends on social media. As always, that is going to sum it up for today's discussion on Tropical Storm Alberto. Please be safe and please be weather aware. Be prepared, don't be scared. And I'll be back with you later on with another update on this system as long as it remains a threat.